Okay, I want to turn to the United States now because the governor of Maryland has declared a state of emergency after a major bridge collapsed in Baltimore. It happened after a container ship rammed into it. Police in Baltimore said they were trying to rescue up to 20 people after vehicles fell into the Patapsco River. The ship, which was heading out of the port, then caught fire. The Baltimore Fire Department described what happened just before 1.30 a.m. local time as a dire emergency. Let's have a listen. Let's take you to Baltimore. Everybody good? Everybody ready? Okay, good morning. My name is Chief James Wallace. I'm the chief of the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm joined this morning by our Mayor Brandon Scott, Council President Mosby, Councilwoman Porter, County Executive Johnny Oshevsky, and Baltimore County Fire Chief Joanne Run. Um, our brief this morning will be an update on the search and rescue operation that's ongoing at this point. So at approximately 0140 hours this morning, our 911 center dispatched a call to the Baltimore City Fire Department for a report of a water rescue um, in the Patapsco River in the area of the Key Bridge. As units were responding, they began to receive numerous calls indicating multiple people in the water. At some point during that, that chain of events of calls, uh, we began to receive indications that a, uh, a ship may have struck the key bridge. We got further information through multiple calls that the key bridge, um, portions of the key bridge had actually collapsed. At about 0150 hours, our first unit arrived on scene and reported um, a complete collapse of the key bridge. Um, we were also given information at that time that there were likely multiple people on the bridge at the time of the collapse and that as a result, multiple people were in the water. We were able to remove uh, two people from the water. One individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially, that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple marine assets from around the region, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. We believe at this point, we may be looking for, we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. That's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. Um, over the next 8 to 12 hours, you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above. Um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So. Um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief.
OK, uh, we're just listening in there to James Wallace. He's uh, from the Baltimore City Fire uh, Department, just giving us uh, the latest on that search and rescue operation ongoing at the moment uh, uh, after Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed in the early hours of this morning after container ship collided with it. Uh, we're just looking at live pictures in there. Uh, initially, it was thought as many as 20 people had fall fallen into the water, including uh, a number of cars. Uh, according to James Wallace there, for, uh, the fire chief, uh, they are still looking for seven individuals who are in that water, as far as he knows at this moment. Two people, he said, had been rescued from the water. Let's go to Anthony Oliver. He's the host of the Infrastructure Podcast and a former editor of the new Civil Engineer magazine. He joins us now from London. Thank you so much for your time, Anthony. So uh, this is still a very much developing situation. And as, uh, as the fire chief... Uh, was saying uh, they are still very much in uh, a rescue, a search and rescue mode. Uh, so I'm going to ask you about that first. I mean, what are the challenging challenges, as far as you can understand, of, 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 of trying to find people uh, now? Uh, people who have fallen into what is most likely incredibly cold water and not necessarily a very safe situation, given the nature of uh, what's happened. Well, a hugely, hugely difficult operation, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, a massive tragedy for the whole of Baltimore. I mean, they'll be up against you know, a fast-moving river, as you say, but also a structure which is incredibly unstable. So they'll be trying to work around that and really trying to um, uh, find a path to actually search, you know, carry out the search and rescue operation without endangering the emergency services. So a really difficult task, and they'll have to spread their their net incredibly wide because uh, you know, unfortunately, the uh, the river will have taken quite a lot of the uh, the, the debris, the, the cars, the people uh, down the river quite a long way. So a challenging operation. The fact that they uh, have found two people, uh, one unharmed, one, uh, according to James Wallace, uh, in a critical condition, I think, was how he described it. Uh, is that hopeful at all, that they've found two, two people so far? Well, obviously, there's always, there's always hope, but you know, as you say, it's, the river's going to be very cold. Uh, the amount of time you can spend in that cold water is is, is relatively short. So uh, they need to act pretty pretty rapidly to, to try to find these people and to work out where they are. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, as I say, it's a difficult operation and one that, that they, you know, sounds like they're, they're, they're all over right now um, and really looking, you know, putting all the resources they can to find these people. Anthony, I don't want to make you speculate uh, too much about what happened, uh, why it happened, but can you, uh, f from what you are aware of the situation, can you talk us through exactly uh, the events that took place uh, which, would, which led to this situation? Well, I think anyone that's seen the video, it's, it's, it's fairly clear that you know you, you've got a, you've got a, 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 a steel through truss bridge, which is you know it's, it's a 1977 bridge. It's a, it's a very common sort of bridge design in the U.S. It's built on relatively slender. Uh, concrete piers uh, that are in, in the river, but it's it's been hit um, by a very large vessel of you know, thousands of tons in a container ship. And this bridge will have been designed to take wind load, been designed to take traffic load, uh, and and you know, it, and it will also have been designed to to withstand a certain amount of bridge strikes from the uh, uh, ships that pass beneath. Then it's not uncommon that bridges are hit by ships, but you know, this is a very large load hitting a a very slender column. And and um, you know the result is is, is clear. The, the 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 structure is uh, is, is lost its integrity, and the, you know it, it, it sits on on hinge by the looks of it, on hinge bearings on it, on the top of each each of the piers. Uh, it's lost its integrity, and the whole lot has come down effectively like a pack of cards. So uh, it, it, you know, there, there's not a huge amount of speculation as to what's caused it. It's a very large bridge, a very a very large bridge hit by a very large object, and um, uh, the, the the ship's mass is just simply been too much for the bridge structure. As you say, it, it did indeed look like a pack of cards that had come apart. Uh, you said that uh, incidences like this are uh, happen a lot. Is, is that right? Uh, it's, it's not unusual for, for ships to collide into bridges, but you don't necessarily see them collapse like this. 
No, I mean bridges. You know, they they are to a certain extent designed to take small loads from from ships because you know the, there was an incident um, several years ago where one in the River Thames was hit by a, um, a, a ship. Um, yeah, you do have also um, when they design the bridges, they they, they they assume that that there may well sometimes be uh, ships that stray offline and 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 veer towards the piers in the river. You quite often have. I mean, in fact, there 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 are there examples. I think in that that case. There is a, 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 a I think they call them a dolphin, a, a protective pier which goes ahead of the actual main pier, um, and quite often you have structures that are built around the actual piers to actually to protect them. Certainly, when you look at a bridge such as the uh, the Gateshead Bridge the, that was built recently, there is a, a quite a lot of structure which actually channels the ships away from the structure. Um, but in this case, it looks like that you know, those protective dolphins weren't weren't enough to stop the the, the the sheer mass of this of this bridge of this of this ship they hit the bridge okay questions to be answered over time uh, many thanks for that anthony oliver the host of the infrastructure podcast and the former editor of the new civil engineer magazine